I'm live. Hello. Um, Jane Green here. I'm just deciding to do much more uh, live video because I haven't been doing very much and it's fun, first of all. And also I'm at home, so I think the quality will be much better than the one I did the other night with Caroline Leavitt, um, who's the author of The Wonderful, Cruel, Beautiful World. So if you follow me on Facebook, then you will know that every week I usually write a story about my life. And so what I've decided to do with these videos is actually read you the stories um, as I'm writing them. So you will be the first to know. So um, I'm going to read you one of the stories from my life. And then I'm going to show you what I'm reading this week. And if you wait till the end of the video, um, it's not a very long story, um, I will have a giveaway as well. Um, and I will answer some questions actually. So, so when I finish the story, if you want to ask me any questions, um, I would love to answer them. And I'm seeing all kinds of wonderful people that I know, Amy Gudge-Smith and Mary Ellen on Nantucket, um, Vicky Lee Amschler, it's so nice. Oh my goodness. So. This is from my column in the Lady magazine. I have a bizarre obsession with grey hair. Ten years ago, I remember telling my best friend that I was thinking about going grey and she was horrified, saying I was much too young. I had a friend at the time, a woman quite a bit older than me, who had been a Ford model when young. She was still spectacularly beautiful, with a mane of silver white hair that was always beautifully coiffed and styled. Every time she walked in the room, I'd look at her hair with envy, wishing that mine would turn that same silvery grey overnight. Now I have roots, and they are a combination of silver grey and steel grey, and I am letting the roots grow and grow, wondering if I have the courage to go natural. I've mentioned before how spectacularly low maintenance I am. I stopped getting blonde highlights because I didn't have the patience to go to the hairdresser every six to eight weeks and sit in the chair for three hours. It was far too much work. I only get my hair cut once or twice a year. I don't do manicures or pedicures or facials. I've had a number of meetings recently with very glamorous New York women, and all of them have had very long, thick eyelashes, extensions, and fabulously thick and perfectly shaped eyebrows, microblading. I'm deeply envious of their eyelashes and their eyebrows, but I can't be bothered. The only thing I can be bothered to do is dye my hair at home, which I did once I stopped going to the hairdresser. It was very easy, not at all messy. Liquid henna now exists. It's a thing. No more stinky green powder all over the bathroom. And my hair was a fabulously dark red, which has now faded after every wash to a somewhat nondescript colour that is currently midway between, well, I'm not quite sure what it is, but uh, there's definitely quite a bit of grey in there. Every time I wash my hair, I get a small thrill from the silver roots, but I have a small problem, which is my husband. He hates the idea of me with grey hair. Each time I try and convince him, he just shakes his head saying I'm not old enough. I have this hope that once my hair is fully silver, he might appreciate how dramatic and wonderful it is. And so I'm trying to go grey without him noticing. This is not an easy feat. I've been buying boatloads of something called Root Concealer, which is a coloured spray to cover up the greys. It works wonderfully well and leaves your hair with the texture of straw. Also, I noticed last week that there was a rather unappetising patch of brown on the pale grey headboard of our bed. All that sitting up on bed had left its mark and I have no idea how I'm supposed to get rid of it. So um, anyway, in the meantime, uh, if you see my husband, don't tell him and I'm going to reveal this to you. I think, can you see my silvery roots? Shh, see that? This is where I don't, this is where I'm not spraying. So um, anyway, that's my latest column. Um, oh dear, my husband appears to be watching. Um, so that is my story of the week. And I will say I'm not alone. There is a wonderful English author called Rowan Coleman. Um, and I know I, I, we follow each other on Facebook and I know that Rowan is doing the same thing as me. So um, 
anyway. So if you're not following her on Facebook, then you, you have to follow her now. So this is what I am reading this week. This is the advanced copy of a book called Promise by Min Rose Gwynn. It's backwards, um, so I apologise for it being backwards, but it's really wonderful. I'm just going to read you the beginning. Um, in the aftermath of a devastating tornado that rips through Mississippi at the height of the Great Depression, two women worlds apart, one black, one white, one a great grandmother, the other a teenager, fight for their family's survival in this lyrical and powerful novel with the emotional impact of the works of Jasmine Ward, Christina Baker Klein, Jane Ann Phillips and Sue Monk Kidd. So that is Promise by Min Rose Gwynn, which I, I believe is out now. Um, and I will be doing a giveaway for this on, I think, tomorrow. So just keep watching this space. And I will also probably throw in a giveaway of this, which is The Sunshine Sisters. If you've read it, thank you. Um, if you haven't read it, the paperback is coming out on May the 1st and it's available for pre-order now. Um, all the links are in this copy. Um, and... Uh, and now I'm just going to say hello um, to people and I will I will happily answer questions. Julie, Julie, Julie is saying glitter strands. Unfortunately, I can't do that because then I will look just like my mother-in-law who I actually nicknamed Sparkles because she does have glitter strands in her hair. Karen Osler is saying she loved the Sunshine Sisters. Thank you. I, I um, It's my favourite book in years. I just really, really love it. Um, I love sisters. I always wanted a sister. I don't have any. Um, and so I think um, that's my story for the week. So thank you all for tuning in. And I think I'll be back next week. Um, and also what I'm planning to do is to bring some of my author friends. You know, we, we Caroline Leavitt and I, did um, did sit here and do our Facebook Live for the Jane Green Book Club, and it was terrible Wi-Fi. Um, but hopefully it'll be much better going forward. But I'm going to bring some author friends in, and we're going to sit and chat about the writing life and uh, what we're reading and what we're writing. So in the meantime, wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying beautiful weather, and um, see you soon.